Hey everyone, Kalpit Dhirubal here. So this video is going to be about the second part of Python programming series and this is going to be about input, output and uh, strings and a few other things which I missed, which might ha I might have missed in the first uh, video. So uh, one thing which I should tell you is that uh, keep on practicing these things because you know it takes a lot of effort. I did a lot of effort when I was learning this, then I was going to clear it well. So just keep on working hard guys. Okay, so a lot of people told me that they were unable to run Python on their computer because they were getting some error like uh, they were getting some error which said that interpreter is not working. Okay, so I'll just tell you the solution of that. So just go to Google and type Python 3 download. Okay, so go to the first link and you will see this website where you, you will see this box. Click on it to download Python 3. So what this error basically means is that you do not have Python installed in a system when you are running Python. So Python and PyCharm are different things. PyCharm is the way or the tool of running Python and Python is the programming language. Okay, so just download it and install it on a computer. I did not tell this to you explicitly because I wanted you to figure it out and download it yourself. Uh, and some people did, which is good. But for others, you can use this. So just uh, Google things up whenever you're in trouble. Okay, when you see any error, just copy the error, paste it on Google and just Google it. You will probably find the solution to it on Stack Overflow, GitHub or some, some website of some kind. Okay, uh, and if you have any other doubts or comments, just comment below. I will try to uh, solve them. So let's start with the second video. Okay, so in this video, I will teach you how to take input in Python. So for example, if you have, uh, let's say, uh, uh, let's say you want, uh, so, so in some programs, you have to give the input from the user. For example, if you're making a calculator, then like, for example, I wrote that A equal to 1080. Okay, and then I write print A. Okay, so here you'll see that when you run this program, you'll see 1080 outputted on the screen. But here you have given the given the input or the value of A in the program itself. Okay, so if an external person wants to run this program, he or she will be only able to print 1080. He or she will not be able to print what he or she wants. Okay, so for this, you need to give the input yourself. Okay, so the way to do is, uh, so if you, so for example, in calculators or in word processor or whatever, you, you give the input as a user, okay? So here you have to use whatever, what is called the input function. When you write input, then it asks for your input and then you will be able to run the program. So here it will ask for your input. So here, let's say you want to input uh, the num, uh, so here, you have, let's say I want to input the string. Hi, everyone. Okay, oh shit. Hi everyone. So here you see. Uh, ah, sorry. So after you input, you just have to print. You just have to say. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Okay. So there have been some mishaps. I'll just run it again for you so that you don't get confused. Ah, so you just write here, culpit. Okay. So it will print culpit. So what it did is basically. When you, the first line is input. Okay, so it means that ask the user for input and whatever he or she has inputted here, I inputted culpit. The second line is, so it means that A is assigned the value which is equal to what the input is. So here the input is culpit. Okay, so that input value, the culpit value is assigned to variable A and that is printed. Now, by default, when you take input, it is considered to be a string. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to print, let's say a number. Okay, so I'll run this program again. So here, I, if I want to print a number, let's say I want to, uh, okay, so uh, it's like when you take an input, it's considered to be a string. Let's say I want to input the number 69 and then I run the program. Then what you'll see is, ah, I type 69 and then I press enter. Then it will in output string, but the 69 is treated as a string. Why do I say so? So if I want to print, let's say A plus five, I want to print 674, okay? Then I will write a plus five. Then I, when I run this program and I input it, let's say I input it 69 again, it will not print 74. It will say that there is an error. Why? Because it treated is treated this as a string. So now you cannot use this with this, as I told in the last video. Okay, if you have not just watched the last video. So now what's the solution to this? So there are some things called data types. Okay, so I'll explain that to you. So basically, uh, in in real life, we have different kinds of data. We have something like numbers, for example, 80 is a number, or let's say Minesh, uh, the name Minesh is a string. 
और देन वी हैव समथिंग और कैरेक्टर सो दिस इज अ स्पेशल कैरेक्टर डॉलर साइन स्पेशल कैरेक्टर और इवन द लेटर ए इज अ कैरेक्टर इट्स नॉट अ स्ट्रिंग स्ट्रिंग इज बेसिकली वी अ वर्ड एंड दिस इज अ लेटर और अ सिंबल सो दीज आर सम डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ इनपुट्स सो हियर देन वी ऑल्सो फॉर नाइन्टी पॉइंट एट जीरो ओके सो दिस इज ऑल्सो अ इनपुट ओके इनपुट और डेटा टाइप ओके सो नाउ बाय डिफॉल्ट इनपुट विल से दैट योर डेटा टाइप इज ऑफ द टाइप स्ट्रिंग ओके सो हियर यू कैन नॉट Uh, use this. So when you want to take, say to Python that, hey Python, I wanted to take the input as a as an integer or as this data type, the integer data type. Then what you do is you type a simple int in front of this input, and then you close it, close the input thing in the round braces. Okay. So now if you say this, if you see this, then there won't be any issues. It will print seventy four when I input the same number. Okay. It will output seventy four. Okay. So now there are few other issues here. Uh, talk about the next part. Yeah, so this was it about taking inputs as integers or strings. Okay. Now if I want to, then I'll tell you something about a little bit about strings. So if you have two strings, let's say a is equal to Kalpit, then you have another string b equal to Virval. Okay. Now if you want to join these strings, then there is a simple way to do it. Let's say we define a variable c equal to a plus b. So this means just take a and b both and just add them. So when I say add them, what I mean is this. So if I print c, then this is what you'll see. You'll see culprit we will join together. So what it does is it takes this and it just smashes this together with this. Okay, so it deletes all of this and then it prints just this. Okay, this is what concatenation means. This is useful quite many times when you want to make Android apps which involve some kind of input. It can come useful at times. Okay. so that that all for the later part okay so this was it about the uh uh string part then i'll tell you all something about okay so basically strings are done input output is done and i'll tell you a bit about comments so sometimes you just want to write some comments on the code some notes some little notes some bits and pieces of words which you just want to write to remind you of something related to the code so for example i'll write the below code is a piece of sheet okay so this means so if i write something like print hi then it means that the below code is a piece of p of sheet okay so this means that i have to just keep on reminding myself that the below code is a piece of sheet okay so p of sheet wow So this this is something which is not read by the code at all. The code ignores this line. When your Python is running, the Python will ignore this line. Okay, it is just for you. It is just for the user. It is just for the coder or developer to know that yeah, okay, this is a comment which I made about the code. That's it. You can make as many comments as long as they start with a hash. This something okay. Now there are different kinds of comments. Like some people will say that there is this type of comment where you have three. Just ignore all of these. Okay, these things are not really needed. You can live your life just by knowing this. Okay. <laughs> there are things other things as well but i am not trying to tell them just so that you do not get confused okay so this was mostly about what i wanted to say so we have covered data types strings and some commenting here so uh, uh, i realized that the last video was a bit longer for most people and so i am trying to make shorter videos around 10 minutes 11 minutes now so what you learned till now is probably very basic stuff not something very advanced